I'm going to talk to you about something which Jesus has done and what's written in the Bible. And I'm going to bring this to you in the topic, Already Blessings, it's called. Pre-prepared and pre-stored. Amen. It's pre-prepared and pre-stored blessings. When you look at the scripture, you start to understand that God's wonderful works had been prepared, you know, long, long time ago. None of us are an accident in this world. There is no baby is born in this world and that we call that baby as accident. And so we say that everybody who has come into this world has a purpose. So when you go to Psalm 105 verse 17, Psalm 105 17, and it says like this, God's wonderful works, those had been prepared even from before the foundations of the earth becomes very important and significant in particular personalities' life that they became a blessing in this world. In Psalm 105.17, you read this. This God of yours has become an already God of provision. But he had already sent a man ahead of his people to Egypt. You know the history that is written in the Old Testament about Abraham. So Abraham had to wait one day before God and he has cut all the, all the animals and he has prepared all the uh, uh, body like the fuel waiting for the fire to come from heaven and it never came for a long time and during the time a, a darkness came and covered the place and then afterwards God started telling him about how his generation is going to be slaves in Egypt and so he said that he was, he, uh, they were all going to be for so many years, so and so, so and so years, that they are going to be in the bondage. So it, it was pre-informed uh, to Abraham. This is a scripture, he, God sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold as a servant. So when you look at this, a man was sent ahead of his people to Egypt. When you talk about Egypt, all of us know that it is a place of bondage. It's a place of slavery, you know, oppression and taskmasters and hue and cry. And so I put it in my notebook. So bondage means uh, none of us like to be in a bondage. We do not like to be in any type of captivity. We want to breathe the free air. We want to live in a free place. We want to do our things in freedom. And we like to be in freedom. Amen. Amen. And nobody will say, come on, I want to come to the prison. Please, you know, put chains in my hand and put me in the cell. None will like it, even including a robber. You see, everybody wants to flee from captivity. And so here we see that none of us like to stay in captivity. But then here you see that but people were kept in bondage and slavery and even before that could happen, God pre-planned Joseph's entry into that land of Egypt. So in your life and my life, you know, if you are very cheerful, I can preach well. And so in your life and my life, God has sent a freedom a doer or a liberator even before you entered into captivity so nobody here can say that I, I am a captive of so-and-so thing I'm a captive I'm addicted to so-and-so thing 
and who on earth can uh, relieve uh, me from teenage age i'm like this from uh, you know 20s i'm like this maybe you have such type of captivity in your life but god wants to tell you that he had pre-planned your freedom not your captivity that he had pre-planned it so he had to send jesus christ into this world so joseph was sent it's the same way you read here in philippians chapter 2 and you read such things and i'm taken down and i'm reading that notes for you he appeared in human form and jesus christ did not come as a as a god into this world even though he was a god man and he was son of god son of man say hallelujah and he came into this world to identify himself with the human race and he was born you know to be among the humans and he was born and walked like a man you know he walked and worked like a man even though he was not purely a human born he was from above and so he appeared in the human form number two he abased and humbled himself the Bible says in Philippians 2 that he, you know, did not count it as a robbery to be equal to God, but he, you know, I mean, gave up all of those riches and treasures and the golden uh, streets and came down to the dusty uh, Jerusalem and Israel. And so uh, he humbled himself. Still further, we can see that he carried his obedience to the extreme of death, even the death of the cross. And he stooped so low. So Jesus Christ, being the Son of God, Son of Man, he stooped so low because you and I were in God's plan. Say hallelujah. And he, God did not want to go to heaven without you and I. That so he said, okay, I have to pay, pay, make a plan to set them free because those who are bound in sins and bondages and sicknesses and those who are in generational curses, generational bondages, bloodline curses and all different types of traits and behavioral pattern and all of that, you know, uh, every, everything that the enemy could uh, uh, put on them, Jesus Christ said that I have come to set you free. I am a God who can set anybody free. When you call upon the Lord that you shall be free. So in Christ's name, you shall be free. Even now as you are listening to me. Because Jesus Christ was not saying that I'm God. I am come from there. Do you know my father? Did I talk? I talked to him yesterday. Never a word he said. But then he was performing all the miracle signs and wonders. And he is performing miracle signs and wonders even today. And he is a God who is ever living and nothing can stop him. He is infinite and he is everlasting to everlasting God. And we glorify him. His tomb is open. His tomb is not closed. Nobody, thousands of people don't have to go and see a closed tomb. You go to see an open tomb if at all. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. So I live for him. I live for him. And this song, First Love, was sung. You know, I took myself to those days, you know, earlier days of the ministry beginning. What are all uh, words that confessions or commitment or covenants as a young uh, woman? I, I, I have spoken to this God. It flashed back. My goodness, I don't tell you such things now, God. But then I stay in that God. So I was so uh, happy to hear that uh, first love song. Because everybody here, you are having, uh, 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 you are having uh, what to say, an invitation to accept this today. Number two, he's a God of comfort. Uh, in John 14, what is pre-planned? The number two thing. The, what is the second pre-planned or already blessing? Number two, you read from John 14, 1 to 6. You can go to John 14, 1 to 6. Jesus Christ is talking. Say Jesus Christ. Again, say Jesus Christ. Again, say Jesus Christ. Again, say Jesus Christ. Again, say Jesus Christ. So it says like this, don't worry. What is that? I'm reading from a passion translation. What is that he says? Come on. What he said? Oh, okay, again. How many of you say that it's suiting me? Don't worry and uh, or surrender to your fear. This is amplified version. I'm reading the passion. For you believed in God. Now trust and believe in me. 
also my father's house has many dwelling places okay you'll have to you have to enjoy like how i enjoy the scriptures usually so i have put in my notebook you know which you know comes into my heart i put in my notebook saying uh, God, jesus christ is speaking about something very very special when you read john 14 everybody will think okay in heaven when you go to heaven die and go to heaven there are many mansions there are many dwelling places that's right how many uh, uh, preached or how many heard i don't know but i want to change this little bit i know there may be ma mansions and people go there and they say several stories about heaven i've not been there so i don't know but i'll have to be uh, you know uh, believing this but i just want to exaggerate on this god right now my father's house has many dwelling places why did he tell that to his disciples and to us why should he say okay you all die go to dwelling place that's finished isn't it why should he say don't worry and go to dwelling place why should he say i go prepare where i go when i go when i come back you just think about that how many has many dwelling places that means for each and every person here there is a dwelling place waiting right here right in front of you in jesus it's not when you die and go but right here right now you know whole life you suffer hell and one day my god i got rid of this hell and go to heaven no you live here as a heaven dweller on this earth say amen you know the kingdom of god is at hand he said at hand that means it's at hand that means it's so close so that means it's near it's around you so dwelling place what for dwelling place i wrote in my notebook abiding and i put a dash and i put rest hallelujah if it were otherwise you know jesus is talking if it were otherwise i would tell you plainly because i go to prepare a place for you to rest question people say when you go to heaven you will be worshiping god forever it's not mentioned you go to heaven and you know you have a beautiful bed and you rest so what is that what is there actually he's telling right here around you within you inside of you you know there is a place of rest say amen and you choose to go he says i go to uh, i go to the cross so that you can have rest while you're here on this earth you can have a dwelling place say dwelling place say dwelling place say dwelling place you know the dwelling place you know is combined with christ jesus and when everything is ready yeah well, look at that when everything is ready i will come back where was he going and when is he coming back that means that is he's coming in the mid air is that right is coming with the trumpets and the angels is it right so long so you don't have rest and you lie here suffer here one day i will come imagine one day i will come you know with horses and champions and chariots and then i will give you rest no no it cannot be he says i go to prepare a place now i'm going to go to the cross and i will come back because i'm going to resurrect i'm going for a short time and i'm coming back and i will go back when i go back it is finished it is over your restlessness is over your confusion is over your panickiness is over your sickness is over about you and around you all around you about you is over i am going to that place say amen i go to prepare a place for you to rest I will come back and take you to myself. Ha? Huh? Take you to? What is it? Myself is heaven or myself is a mansion or tell me. Myself that means those who hear the knock at the door saying open my son open my daughter I behold I stand at the door and knock yeah revelation 3 behold i stand at the door and knock if any man opens the door 
hears me and opens the door i will enter in and we will sup together hallelujah i will come back and take you to myself so the power of resurrection is in christ come on say amen, amen. and every good gifts every perfect gifts comes from the father of all lights and jesus christ came to this world as a good gift and then you know in colossians 3 and 1 you read that you know god here is dwelling in christ and the next word says that you are in christ so that means you are in christ christ is in father father is in christ and father is in you and father son and the holy spirit dwells in you you dwell in them and that's why in john 15 the next chapter he says if you abide in me and i abide in you i am the vine and you are the branches say amen how is the branch life today how is the branch life today that's a, that's a, that's a, that's an invitation how is the branch life today branch is sticking to the plant you in me and i in you so pre plant you know pre done what is that god of comfort had already brought the abiding place for you you need to take a step and enter into him say amen. amen you already know the way to the place where i am going you already know the way to the place where i am going did you see in your bible that you already know the way to the place where i am going this is what jesus is listening to what i am preaching right now what was the way the way was the cross he had to voluntarily go and say okay i'm coming that means i'm making a way for you to enter in say amen so the cross made the door opening you know that if you enter through me jesus said in john 10 you will enter and find what pastures so if you are hungry you enter in if you are thirsty you enter in the world is going somewhere because they are hungry and thirsty but we do not go to a magician we do not go to a witch doctor we do not go to a, a palm reader we are not going to any type of anything to while away our time because we want to escape something escape from something we choose to enter through the door which is wide open the veil which was torn is wide open i can enter into him amen. say amen i can enter into him i can enter into jesus you can enter into jesus whoever you are john 20 uh, verse 1 it, 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 you know this is the next one as we live on this earth we stand before many blocks and hindrances we stand before many closed doors how many of you know that we stand before mountains we stand before sea and we stand before rivers you know we stand before many tsunamis in the world <laughs> we stand before you know there is no hope there is no hope area we stand before all of this now look at this what is pre prepared in the scripture john 21 very early sunday morning before sunrise miriam magdalene made her way to the tomb and when she arrived she discovered that the stone that sealed the entrance of the tomb was moved away yeah. what are we learning from here whatever stone that is blocking come on loudly confess whatever stone how big ever stone you know what hard hard stone that is blocking your way is rolled away it's not going to be rolled away it is rolled away say amen it is rolled away that's all i know because the bible says it's rolled away you know a heavy duty problem is a sickness which doctor says there's no cure it is rolled away i believe it i know it what i'm telling you you know you will have a clear report because it is rolled away your children will walk of the lord and great shall be the peace of your children because it's rolled away 
and you are not looking at what's happening around you right now because it's done already it's one of your already blessing it's one of your already blessing it's all done b b b before it's already blessing come on take it right now whatever hindrance it is it's done already say amen because we depend on him today and the number four what i'm going to say is john chapter 6 verse 5 look at this here it says jesus sat down ha i, I don't know how many of you noticed that phrase i notice such things Jesus sat down. Why? He was walking all through. He was standing preaching. He was walking, walking, walking. The scripture says, Jesus sat down. How, uh, do, how many of you remember that Jesus did sit down? He sat down, sat down at the right side of the Father. When he rose from the dead... When he ascended, he went and sat down at the right side of the Father. And I believe, you know, from the first alphabet to the last alphabet of this Bible. So Jesus Christ sat down at the right side of the Father. Jesus Christ sat down at the right side of the Father. Jesus Christ sat down at the right side of the Father. I will say till you are awake. Jesus Christ sat down at the right side of the Father. Amen. He sat down. Now he's sitting down on the grass. He looked around, uh, uh, around, uh, out and saw the massive crowd of people scrambling up the hill. For they wanted to be near to him. How many like to be near to Jesus? They wanted to be near to him. Then Jesus is talking to Philip. Where will we buy enough food to feed all these people? Can you get this? Jesus talking to Philip saying, asking, where we will go and buy? Now, pre-planned provision. Say pre-planned provision. That afternoon. Okay. So according to the scriptures in one place, it says that, you know, the, the, the disciples come and say, oh, three days they had been around us. So that means, so nobody went anywhere because they were behind him. They wanted to be near him. And then what happens here? A mother of a young lad prepared a different, a snack box or a lunch box and gave him, go, like, you know, it's a retreat place. They're all up in the mountain. You go and you have this food if you want. So it was a pre-planned, pre prepared provision for the miracle. Your miracle may be, it, it is for 5,000 people, it's for 7,000 people, but your miracle is more than enough to provide all what you need because it's pre-planned. If it is 7,000, it's going to be multiplying for 7,000. If it is 5,000, it's going to be multiplied. For. What is your need today? It's a 5,000 or 7,000 or 10,000 in whatever form. Say amen. amen. So it's pre-planned. A young lad here, he has some different box, a snack box. That became Jesus Christ's miracle, you know, token. Okay. So the same thing you see in the Old Testament, you know, Elijah goes and there is a miracle, there is a widow, Sarfat. What is mentioned over there? Already God has arranged a widow. How many of you are in, at the crossroads saying, I want this to be arranged when I reach there. I want this to be done when I go there. I want this to be done tomorrow. I want, to, I want this to be done next week. God wants you to know if you only believe, it's pre-planned for you. Hallelujah. The next thing is Psalm 23. You become my delicious feast. Even when my enemies dare to fight. You anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of you until my heart overflows. Drink off Jesus. It's so funny, isn't it? 
So you go drink of Jesus. Say drink of Jesus. Drink of the Holy Spirit. You know people say they use the terminology called be drunk in the Spirit. Yeah. How many of you think that be drunk in the Spirit is really true? So you go and you not only eat of him, you drink of him. Jesus Christ before, you know, in the, at the Passover, this is the Passover time, isn't it? The Passover, he says, you can drink my flesh and you can drink my blood. That means anything and everything of Jesus, you have a provision from that. You have a provision from anything. When you take the communion, for, so to speak, and you take the bread and you take the cup, let me tell you, you identify taking Jesus Christ inside of you. When you take it by faith, that means every provision that Jesus Christ has done comes inside of you. Say amen. So this is how God wants us to know that there is, this is the next already provision. The next thing is, uh, the very, very beautiful one is here. It's Matthew chapter 16 verse 19. How many of you like to have keys in your hand? Jesus, all of you know the scripture. Jesus Christ said, I have given you keys. I have given you what? Keys. I've given you keys of the kingdom. I've given you keys of the kingdom. Okay. You've given, come on. When you believe, you receive. That's all. You believe this, you receive. You bind, it's bound. You lose, it's loosed. Amen. And so you give the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Another place it's written, what is kingdom of heaven? What is kingdom of God? It is love, joy, peace. What is that? Love, joy. He says, I give you keys to love, joy, peace. Doesn't look like that. How many of you struggle like me? How many of you say, love, joy, peace? So it's from him. He's the love, joy, peace. And he's telling these three blocks of buildings are there. This is the love, joy, peace buildings. Three buildings. For those buildings, I give you keys. If you want to open the love uh, uh, block, you can open it. If you want to open the peace block, you can open it. You get the point? So it's up to you. He's telling, I give you the keys. That means I rose from the dead. I'm so powerful I have the right to give it to you and you are so fit enough to take care. Yeah. Come on. The main thing, you know, never mind the binding loosing. I, I, I'm fond of this love joy peace, man. Because it's a rare commodity. Sometimes you struggle for it. Amen. And so now you take up your keys and open the door for love, joy and peace. Say amen. amen. And he says, joy and speakable and full of glory. Rejoice in the Lord always and I, again I say rejoice. So many of us do not have rejoicing because you know in the life situation we are very busy even to laugh. Today somebody was telling a revival preacher was preaching and I was hearing and he was telling this. And his so and so somebody so and so was going in a, on a mission trip somewhere and he was he had to go to New York or somewhere driving nine hours on the road and so he calls somebody and say please pray for me and I need so and so I need a vision uh, pray for me and this man tells him do you have radio in your car <laughs> I was so amazed sometimes it's so you know you have to be making things very easy he says yes I have a radio in my so go to so and so so and so uh, thing and open a comedy station he did not say you are going for a mission, you are going for a, a preaching, speak in tongues. But he said, he said, open up comedy station. And from here to there, laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. Say amen. amen. Christians forgot to laugh. Because we became too serious. Speaking tongues, everybody. You come here, sit down here. You know, we forgot to laugh. Because we are, we are from some background, somewhere. You know, 
that you know god is so hard we come from that background so we can't easily laugh or anything you see and laughing itself inside the church is a big big crime to jesus he <laughs> we are to jesus he we can't laugh nobody can laugh don't use any other syllable or a word other than what is written here you can't because it's church what i'm telling is we are too bad that we don't even laugh we forget to laugh come on church how many of you say no god wants us to have what joy say joy again say joy come on transfer yourself and translate yourself into the block into jesus block called joy say amen we forgotten to be happy we forgotten to be joyful because we are too busy otherwise say amen. amen say amen because we think that if we have all the provision in the whole world and if we are the richest or if you have all the blessings overflowing then we can laugh but jesus said no the kingdom of god is with you and so it's love joy peace you can really laugh you can have joy so all the youngsters don't go home and sit down take your <laughs> yeah i'm so scared yeah comedy pastor said comedy you first of all don't become a comedy you right read and learn your studies and then you do the comedy yeah i'm so scared to say anything here because ha ah, pastor said ba we can hey what are you watching comedy <laughs> hey why pastor said <laughs> hallelujah amen and the next seventh thing kingdom realm to a uh, forbid on earth that which is forbidden in heaven yeah and to release on earth that is released in heaven because it's already done when you pray listen to this carefully when you pray do you know that your prayer answers were already done it is done believing prayer that is mark 11 believe that you have received when you get into that mode you and i our prayers will be answered altogether so already prepared prayer already prepared plan already it is done according to the scripture you claim it and you receive it amen so eighth one efficiency chapter 15 who are you who are you oh i'm so and so's daughter i'm so and so's son no you're not that's that's here you know you you use here but what does it say look at the scripture he foreordained us he destined us and he planned in love for us to be adopted as his own children in accordance with the purpose of his will his kind intent this is the you know gist of this verse so that means each and every person had been predestined already i have no doubt about it today what i am is predestined today where you are is predestined all these children of yours are predestined amen and you are first second or a third it's predestined you know everything is predestined you are in this country it is predestined amen and so he is telling he has planned all of this because he love you in this world there is one person with the unstoppable love is jesus and today we say we glorify you because you rose from the dead and you went through the cross just for us because god so loved the world he gave his only begotten son for those who ever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life amen, amen. hallelujah thank you jesus come on give the lord a glory glorious shout of praise glorious shout of praise hallelujah are you happy today 
you know you can pour out your happiness somewhere come on you can release your happiness today amen you can release your freedom today if anybody has come inside and if you think that you don't deserve all of it let me tell you it's all a free gift just walk in the ways of the lord and follow this word and it is yours amen hallelujah thank you jesus loving father we come before you come on everybody just pray right now everybody praise him right now praise him just praise him shout out and praise him praise him the scripture closes like this you've been made holy come on don't forget to hear that you are already holy you were predestined to be holy not what you're doing but you are predestined to be holy that's all you're adopted into his family that's all you are made holy already already by the cross amen even before the foundations of the earth heavenly father we love you heavenly father we praise you and we thank you for such an opportunity you've given us to know you that these eight already blessings pre-planned blessings are ours and we know that you are a, you are a, a kind father you are a beautiful loving brother that you've done this with kind intent so we love you we honor you god and we receive come on open up your your both your arms and receive all what you've got what you have to get from god right now open up and open your mouth and say because these things were pre-planned these things were predestined Come on, come on, everyone. A beautiful, beautiful, beautiful something, so on, so in Jesus' name. Come on, ask this, ask that, ask that. There is nothing impossible with this God. Come on, come on, there is nothing important. Now, something is happening now. Some miracle to here or to somewhere. It is happening. You shall be blessed in the land of your living. Come on, take it your jobs friends jobs benefits you know favor in the job place lifting up promotions come on promotion more money in your job come on somebody has to do it for you visas and job transfers and uh, health and healing and joy in the house unity come on all provision everything pertaining to life and godliness we receive them god give the lord a clap offering of praise <laughs> hallelujah blessings spirit soul and body all what god had blessed on me spiritually i bless you in jesus